What is up, everybody? JT Dangerous here once again. I am here to do my Week 16 NFL predictions. Now, Week 15 just ended with the New Orleans Saints defeating the Carolina Panthers tonight on Monday Night Football. So, Week 15 is in the books. And now we're into Week 16 of the NFL season with one week left to go. So, I'm very excited to do my Week 16 predictions for you guys. And I hope you guys do enjoy. Now, our record. Coming into Week 16 after a not-so-good Week 15, we went 7-9. So, our overall record coming in, it's 126 90 and 2. So it's our first losing record since week 3. And I'm not happy about it, but hey, there's always room for improvement. So hopefully, in this video, we will get back on the winning track. We're on a one week losing streak. Hopefully, in this video, we will end this losing streak and start a new winning streak. Hopefully. Now, if this is your first time watching my channel, as a first time viewer, and this is your first video, boy, you picked a good one if you're a huge NFL fan like myself and you're ready for week 16 of the NFL season. Welcome to the Dangerous Lions. I'm JT Dangerously. Welcome to the club because this club is Just two. Whoop, whoop. Again, thank you guys so very much. Now, other than that, let's get right into these predictions. Starting off on Saturday with the Washington Redskins heading to Nashville to face the Tennessee Titans. Now, the Washington Redskins are coming off their win over the Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday. Josh Johnson didn't do too bad. 151 yards passing, one touchdown, and Jeremy Sprinkle with the lone touchdown for the Redskins. And the Redskins are looking to get a big win on the road against a AFC wildcard contender. They're on the other side of the Tennessee Titans coming off their shutout win over the New York Giants on Sunday. Marcus Mar Mariota didn't really need to do much. 88 yards passing, no touchdowns, but it was all on the hands of Derrick Henry, their running back. 170 yards passing, two touchdowns. And Tennessee is right in the mix in the wild card race. they definitely going to need a lot of help, and they're looking to get a big win on the road to keep their wild card hopes alive. So coming from me in this first matchup on Saturday... I'm going to take Marcus Mariota and the Tennessee Titans to defeat the Washington Redskins. And now the next matchup on Saturday. It is a huge AFC showdown with, a, with definitely uh, chances of, a, of a big things happening. Between the Baltimore Ravens heading to Los Angeles to face the Los Angeles Chargers. Now the Baltimore Ravens are coming off their big win over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday. Lamar Jackson had a big time game, 131 yards passing, one touchdown. And he also had 95 yards on the ground. Gus Edwards, 104 yards rushing and a touchdown. And Chris Moore with the receiving touchdown. And Baltimore is definitely in the, in the position of... They win, they're in, they're the sixth seed in the AFC playoff race, and they they have a they still have a definite chance of winning the AFC North if Pittsburgh slips up just once. And Baltimore is definitely looking to get a big win on the road against a top AFC team. Then on your side of the Los Angeles Chargers coming in after their big come from behind down 14 late in the fourth quarter to defeat the Kansas City Chiefs on Thursday Night Football. And they clinched the playoff playoff spot with that win. And they also have a chance to winning the AFC West Division title. Phillip Rivers had 313 yards passing, two touchdowns, two picks. Justin Jackson with 58 yards rushing and a touchdown. And Mike Williams with 76 yards receiving and two touchdowns. So both teams are in must-win mode. They they could easily they can both teams can easily win their division titles with their rivals slipping on a banana peel. So this game is definitely big time, big time moments for them. So coming from me in this huge AFC showdown with a division title at stake or possible wild card berth, this one's tough. I'm gonna go with the Los Angeles Chargers to defeat the Baltimore Ravens in a really close one. And now the Sunday slate, which starts at 10 a.m. here on the West Coast, 1 p.m. on the East Coast. Starting off with the AFC North Rivalry Showdown, and it's the Battle of Ohio Part 2 between the Cincinnati Bengals heading to Cleveland to face the Cleveland Browns. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals are coming off their win over the Oakland Raiders on Sunday. Jeff Driscoll didn't do too bad, 130 yards passing, one, one touchdown, one pick. Joe Mixon, the former Oklahoma Sooner, had his best game as a Cincinnati Bengal, 129 yards rushing and two touchdowns. And Tyler Boyd, the former Clemson Tiger, with a receiving touchdown. And Cincinnati's looking to exact their revenge against their rivals from Ohio and get a big win on the road. Then on the other side of the Cleveland Browns coming off their big win on the road on Saturday over the Denver Broncos. Baker Mayfield once again has done it again. 188 yards passing, two touchdowns, one pick. Nick Chubb, the former Georgia Bulldog, 100 yards rushing. Callaway and Perriman with two touchdowns. And this Browns team, if you can believe it, are still in the hunt for the wild card spot. So even though their chances are very slim of winning, just this season has been so good for Cleveland. I mean, ever since they started Baker Mayfield, which I've been saying since week one, they have been winning. 
winning, winning, keeping games close, keeping games close. And I'm just going to say right now, Cleveland has a new prodigal son, and his name is Baker Mayfield. I watched him at Oklahoma. I can, I'm, proof, I'm proof positive that this guy is the legit real deal and he has definitely proven it in Cleveland and the Browns are looking to finish up a season sweep of their rivals from Ohio. So coming from me in this AFC North rivalry showdown and it's the Battle of Ohio part two. I <sighs> mean I picked Cleveland uh, I picked Cleveland in the first meeting so you know what I'm going to take the Cleveland Browns to sweep the Cincinnati Bengals in the Battle of Ohio. And now the next matchup. It is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers heading to the Jerry Dome to face the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Tampa Bay Buccaneers are coming off their loss to the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday. Jameis Winston, 157 yards passing, one pick. Peyton Barber, 85 yards rushing, one touchdown. And Tampa Bay is looking to just finish this very rough, another rough season for the Buccaneers by getting a big road win against a NFC playoff caliber team. The on the other side of the Dallas Cowboys coming off their shutout loss to the Indianapolis Colts. I guess they didn't listen to my video last week to not underestimate the Colts. They laid an egg, and they laid a huge egg. Dak Prescott, 206 yards passing one pick. That loss definitely could change the whole NFC playoff picture because with Philadelphia's win against the Rams, Philly has a, sl has a chance to win the NFC East if Dallas slips up here and next week and Philly uh, wins out. The only way Philly can win the East if Dallas loses the next three games and the next the next two games, and they cannot afford a loss here. And they're looking to rebound and bounce back at home. So coming from me in this matchup, I'm going to go with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys to defeat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And now the next matchup. It is an NFC North rivalry showdown between the Minnesota Vikings heading to Ford Field to face the Detroit Lions. Now the Minnesota Vikings are coming off their blowout win over the Miami Dolphins on Sunday at home. Kirk Cousins had a much better game, 215 yards passing, two touchdowns, one pick. Dalvin Cook, the former Florida State Seminole, had a big-time game. His best game as a Minnesota Viking, 136 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Latavius Murray had a rushing touchdown, and Stephon Diggs had a receiving touchdown. And Minnesota, being the number six seed in the NFL, NFC uh, wildcard race definitely needs a big win here to secure their, their spot in the playoffs. And they're looking to get a big win on the road against their NFC North rivals. They're on the other side of the Detroit Lions coming off their embarrassing loss to the Buffalo Bills on Sunday. Matthew Stafford, 208 yards passing, one touchdown. Zach Zanner, 45 yards rushing, one touchdown. But you lost to the Bills, Lions fans. Matt Patricia, you should have stayed where you were. And that was in New England. But I guess you wanted to... Uh, break out of the cage and fly out of Belichick's Belichick's nest, and you see what happens. Bel uh, you see what happens, Patricia. It's not been their year for sure, and Detroit is looking to just get a big win at home, rebound, and knock off their NFC North rivals. So coming from me in this NFC North rivalry showdown, I'm taking Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings to defeat the Detroit Lions. And now the next matchup. It is an AFC East rivalry showdown between the Buffalo Bills heading to Gillette to face my New England Patriots. Now, the Buffalo Bills are coming off a big win over those Detroit Lions on Sunday. Josh Allen had a solid game, 204 yards passing, two touchdowns, one of them being on the ground. And Robert Foster with 108 yards receiving and the game-winning touchdown for the Bills. And the Bills are looking to get a big win against the AFC East leading New England Patriots. And then on the other side, you have my New England Patriots coming off their heartbreaking loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road on Sunday. They got it done. Cannot hate on that. Tom Brady, 279 yards passing. One, pick, one touchdown, one pick. Chris Hogan with the only offensive touchdown for the Patriots in that game against the Steelers. And New England just needs to win to clinch the AFC East for the 10th consecutive year. And they cannot... They cannot favor. They cannot. They cannot afford a loss here because they're already at I think five, four or five losses already. They're not going to have home field event. They're not going to have a first round buy. So they're going to have to scratch. They're going to have to claw. They're going to have to fight for. They're going to fight for survival to make it possibly back to the AFC Championship and possibly back to the Super Bowl. So coming from me in this AFC East rivalry showdown. Ah man. Miami loses, I think we win the East, but I think we win the East nonetheless. So coming from me, I am taking my New England Patriots to rebound and bounce back from this two-week losing streak and defeat the Buffalo Bills. 
And now the next matchup, it is the Green Bay Packers heading to East Rutherford to face the New York Jets. Now the Green Bay Packers are coming off a loss to the Chicago Bears on Sunday, giving the Bears their first NFC North title since 2010. Aaron Rodgers, 274 yards passing, one pick. Jamal Williams, 55 yards rushing and a touchdown. Devontae Adams with 119 yards receiving. And the Packers are definitely not the definitely was not their year this year. And they're looking to rebound and bounce back on the road. The only year side of the New York Jets coming off their Tough loss to the Houston Texans on Saturday at home. Sam Darnold had a pretty good game, 253 yards passing, two touchdowns. Robbie Anderson, 96 yards receiving and a touchdown. And Andre Roberts with a receiving touchdown. But the Jets nearly upset the Houston Texans at home on Saturday, but they just fell short. Story in a nutshell for the Jets. They, have it, they keep it close, but they fall short in the end. And the New York Jets are looking to rebound and bounce back at home. So coming from me in this matchup, I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers to rebound and bounce back on the road and defeat the New York Jets. And now the next matchup. It is a big-time showdown between the Houston Texans heading to Philly to face his reigning Super Bowl champ, the Philadelphia Eagles. Now the Houston Texans are coming off a very nail-biter win over those New York Jets on Saturday. Deshaun Watson, 294 yards passing, two touchdowns. DeAndre Hopkins, 170 yards receiving, two touchdowns. And this Houston team is now the number two seed in the AFC playoffs, if you can believe it. And this team has got a chance to have a first-round bye. They're, they need a few things to happen to win the AFC South. And Houston's looking to get a big win on the road to solidify their spot in the playoffs. The only other side of the Philadelphia Eagles coming off their huge win on the road on Sunday Night Football, defeating the Los Angeles Rams. And Philadelphia looked good. Nick Folds, now the starting quarterback because of Carson Wentz's injury, had a pretty, not very shaky game. Wendell Smallwood had a pretty, pretty solid game on the ground. Alshon Jeffrey had over 100 yards receiving. And the Eagles are in prime position to maybe have a chance to winning the NFC East. Because if Dallas loses their next two games and the Eagles win this game and next week's game, the Eagles will be right back into the playoffs and, and they would have a, chance to re, uh, have a chance to defend their Super Bowl title. So coming from me in this big-time showdown... Oh, man, this one's so tough. I'm going to go with Deshaun Watson and J.J. Watt and the Houston Texans to defeat the Philadelphia Eagles in a close one. And now the next matchup. It is an NFC South rivalry showdown between the Atlanta Falcons heading to Charlotte to face the Carolina Panthers. Now the Atlanta Falcons are coming off a blowout win over the Arizona Cardinals on Sunday. What else is new? The Cardinals just suck this season. Matt Ryan's had a pretty good game, 231 yards passing, three touchdowns, one on the ground. Tevin Coleman, 145 yards rushing and a touchdown. And Julio Jones with a receiving touchdown. And Atlanta is looking to rebound, looking to get another big win against their NFC South rivals. The only other side, you have the Carolina Panthers coming off their loss to the New Orleans Saints tonight on Monday Night Football. Their chances of making the uh, making the wild card are almost now slim and none. And hopefully this will be the last time we see Ron Rivera this season in Charlotte because the Panthers need a new head coach. And Carolina's looking to rebound and bounce back at home. So coming from me in this NFC South rivalry showdown, I'm going to take the Dirty Birds, the Atlanta Falcons, to defeat the Carolina Panthers. And now the next matchup. It is the New York Giants heading to Lucas Oil Stadium to face the Indianapolis Colts. Now the New York Giants are coming off their shutout loss to the Tennessee Titans on Sunday, and they had no offense. Eli Manning, 229 yards, one pick. This has been a very bad year for the Giants, even though Shaquan Barkley is going to win Rookie of the Year, in my opinion. And, and the Giants are looking to rebound and bounce back on the road. The only other side of the Indianapolis Colts coming off their shutout win over the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday. And when I say don't underestimate the Colts, you better take it to the bank. Don't underestimate the Colts. Andrew Luck didn't really need to do anything against the Cowboys. 192 yards passing, no touchdowns. It was all on the hands of Marlon Mack. 139 yards rushing two touchdowns and the Colts are right in the thick of the playoff hunt they are the they're just waiting for Baltimore to just slip on a banana pill Indianapolis just needs to continue to win and they can be the the final wild card team in the AFC playoff race and they would be a very dangerous team to play at home or on the road and Indianapolis is looking to get a big win at home to keep their playoff hopes alive so coming from me in this matchup I'm taking Andrew Luck and the Indianapolis Colts to continue the red hot start, red hot, uh, red hot season, and defeat the New York Giants. 
And now the next matchup. I'm calling this the Yawn Burger with a side of snore match because nobody's going to be watching between the Jacksonville Jaguars heading to Miami to face the Miami Dolphins. Now the Jacksonville Jaguars are coming off their loss to the Washington Redskins on Sunday. No offense. Three field goals. There's, there's, the, there's the Jacksonville Jaguars season in a nutshell. No offense, and they have, they have come from AFC champions, uh, uh, AFC uh, title game, uh, AFC championship caliber team to bargain, uh, bargain, uh, bar I'm trying to try to say this right. Bar, uh, bar, I can never say it. They're just the basement team. Let's just say that. Bargain basement team. There we go. But uh, that's just them in a nutshell, and Jacksonville's looking to get a big win on the road. The only years had the Miami Dolphins coming off their blowout loss to the Minnesota Vikings on the road on Sunday. Tannehill didn't do much, 108 yards passing, no touchdowns. And Karen, uh, Kalen uh, Baggage with 123 yards rushing in one touchdown. That was their offense in a nutshell. And they're still in the wild card race as well, but they're going to need a lot of help because Indianapolis and Tennessee are right on top of are the one and two seed is still in the hunt. And Miami's a three seed. They're going to definitely need some big time help. So coming from me in the first of two Yawn Burger with a side of Snore matchups, I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins to rebound and bounce back at home and defeat the Jacksonville Jaguars. Fins up. And now the next matchup. It is an NFC West rivalry showdown between the Los Angeles Rams heading to Glendale to face the Arizona Cardinals. Now the Los Angeles Rams are coming off a shocking loss at home on Sunday Night Football over the reigning Super Bowl champ Philadelphia Eagles. Jared Goff did not have his best game. 300 yards passing, two picks. Todd Gurley with two rushing touchdowns, but that loss definitely hurt the Rams for sure. And they don't need to start losing here because they have a chance to having a first round bye. They also are also looking to try to have home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs, but losses like the lo losses against the Eagles are not going to help them. And the Rams are looking to rebound and bounce back on the road against their NFC West rivals. The only other side of the Arizona Cardinals coming off their blowout loss to the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday. What else is new, folks? The Fal the Cardinals are just terrible. Josh Rosen did not do good. 132 yards passing, two picks. They benched his ass. They put in Mike Glennon. 111 yards passing, one touchdown. David Johnson, 33 yards rushing and a touchdown. But Arizona is just having a rough, rough year. The worst team in the NFC West right now. And Arizona is looking to rebound and bounce back at home and knock off the NFC West champs. So coming from me in this NFC West rivalry showdown, this could be a possible Pac-12 showdown. Jared Goff from Cal versus Josh Rosen from UCLA. But coming from me, this could be a massacre, and it could be a massacre real early. So I'm going to take the Los Angeles Rams to rebound and bounce back and defeat the Arizona Cardinals in a blowout. And now the next matchup. It is the Chicago Bears heading to Santa Clara to face the San Francisco 49ers. Now the Chicago Bears are coming off a big win at home over the Green Bay Packers on Sunday, clinching the NFC North for the first time since 2010. Mitchell Trubinsky, 235 yards passing, two touchdowns. Jordan Howard, 60 yards rushing and a touchdown. Talik Cohen and uh, Burton with two receiving touchdowns. But who would have thought? Who would have thought the Bears would have won the NFC North? I don't think anybody even thought the Bears would win the North. But I know a certain one of my commenters are, is a Bears fan, and he's got to be happy. And this has just been an, a, mag, a very magical season for the Bears with them getting Khalil Mack and that defense have gotten even bigger, stronger, and better than ever. Mitchell Trubinsky's having a fantastic year, and the Bears are looking to get a big, big win on the road here. So coming from uh, and then on the other side of the San Francisco 49ers coming off their big win over my Seattle Seahawks in overtime at home on Sunday. Nick uh, Nick Mullins with 275 yards passing, one touchdown, and Robbie Gold with four big field goals, including the game winner. But that was the Niners' first win against the Seahawks since 2013. And I and you know who the quarterback was for the 49ers in 2013? Colin Kaepernick. So if, I got to give the Niners credit for winning that game. I mean, they they got it done. We just the my Seahawks just didn't, and the Niners are going to look very dangerous when they get Jimmy Garoppolo back next season. So coming from me in this matchup, I'm going to go with the Bears, the NFC North champs, to defeat the San Francisco 49ers. 
And now the next matchup. It is a big, another big matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers heading to the Superdome to face the New Orleans Saints. Now the Pittsburgh Steelers are coming off their big win at home over my New England Patriots on Sunday, beating us for the first time in over seven years. Big Ben had 235 yards passing, two touchdowns, two picks. Samuels, their rookie, running back, 142 yards rushing. And Antonio Brown with a receiving touchdown. But for the Steelers to beat my Patriots for the first time in seven years, I got to give them a lot of credit. They got it done. We just didn't. But I know a lot of Steelers fans are out there in the comments section. Like Leedy One, who is a diehard Steelers fan, has got to be happy. He was he was on pins and needles uh, commenting with about this game, but I was... Happy to see the Steelers win this game because they definitely earned that earned the win on Sunday. And Pittsburgh's looking to uh, hope Baltimore slips up so they can be once again a AFC North champs. Down the other side, you have the New Orleans Saints coming off their big win tonight on Monday Night Football over the Carolina Panthers, and they're almost in the driver's seat to get home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs if they can just get this win and next week's win and hope the Rams slip up. So coming from me in this huge matchup. <sighs> I'm going to go with the New Orleans Saints to defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers in a close matchup. And now the next matchup, which happens on Sunday Night Football. It is a huge showdown between the Kansas City Chiefs heading to Century Link to face my Seattle Seahawks. Now the Kansas City Chiefs are coming off their shocking loss on Thursday Night Football, blowing a 28-14 lead late in the fourth quarter to the Chargers. Patrick Mahomes, 243 yards passing, two touchdowns. Damian Williams, 49 yards rushing, two touchdowns, but... How do you blow a 28-14 lead late in the fourth quarter against your AFC West rivals? And it definitely cost them a chance to win the AFC West title because now they're just like they're just like uh, they're just like the Cowboys and the Eagles, just like with the Ravens and the uh, Steelers. They have to win out and uh, they have to win out and hope the Chargers slip on a banana peel. And Kansas City is looking to rebound and bounce back on the road on Sunday night. The only other side you have my Seattle Seahawks coming off their loss. In overtime to the San Francisco 49ers on Sunday. And penalties, penalties, penalties beat my Seahawks on Sunday. That is that is for sure. Russell Wilson had a solid game. 237 yards passing, two touchdowns. Chris Carson, our C-Dub, 119 yards rushing and a touchdown. Doug Baldwin, 77 yards receiving and two touchdowns. But penalties, penalties, penalties killed the Seahawks in that game. And they're just one win away from clinching a playoff spot. And they have Arizona next week. So they're looking to maybe wrap up a playoff spot here at home and get it done on Sunday Night Football. So coming from me, in this matchup on Sunday Night Football, Seattle just needs one. One win to clinch a playoff spot. And they have Arizona next week. So coming from me, now this is, I don't usually pick against my teams, but I have to pick against them here. Because I think they'll have a little bit of a favorable matchup against Arizona next week. So coming from me... I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs to rebound and bounce back and defeat the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday Night Football. And now the Monday Night matchup, which is the other Jan Berger with a side of snore game between the Denver Broncos heading to the Black Hole to face the Oakland Raiders. Now the Denver Broncos are coming off their loss to the Cleveland Browns on Saturday. Case Keenum, 257 yards passing, two picks and one rushing touchdown. And Denver's looking to rebound and bounce back on prime time. They're on the other side, you have the Oakland Raiders coming off their loss to the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday. Derek Carr, 263 yards passing, one touchdown. Jordy Nelson, 88 yards receiving. And Lee Smith with the only receiving touchdown. And Oakland's looking to get a big win on prime time as well. So coming from me in this Monday night football matchup in the Jan Berger with a side of snore showdown, I'm going to take the Denver Broncos to defeat the Oakland Raiders. And those are my Week 16 NFL predictions. Now, I want to thank you guys so very much for watching my Week 16 predictions today. Comment below, who do you have winning in Week 16? Do you see any upsets? Do you see any shakeups in the AFC uh, playoff race or the NFC playoff race? Let me know in the comment section below your picks. And as always, represent your NFL teams in the comment section. Let's have a conversation about them. Of course, I'm always on to see your comment, like it, and of course, reply right back to you because comments are absolutely always welcome on this channel. Now, I do want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Now, before you guys go, you guys can never forget to do this. Yes. That like button, comment, share with your friends, of course, super kick that like button like only you guys can. Of course, you can never forget to do this as well. That subscribe button, become part of this bigger and dangerous, dangerous alliance. I will see you guys on Christmas Eve for my New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom 13 2018 2019 predictions and my week 17 NFL predictions. Later days, guys, and peace.